uh, Michael, how about you? When the Spiron sort of partnership started performing for you, were there things where you said, oh, wait, wait, I wasn't quite expecting that? Um, and can you could I have that over again? So, any lessons that you can share from that? One of the main takeaways for her in any weather school, uh, uh, aspiring uh, uh, to enter uh, that uh, fascinating world of uh, the carrier ecosystem, uh, uh, probably uh, you know, assuming that you have the right product, uh, uh, you need to have uh, the right partner uh, to work with. Uh, you need to have uh, a billion uh, use case in our in our situation. Uh, you know, we decided to start uh, with. Uh, uh, a stripped down version of the product uh, uh, for uh, open flow uh, 1.3 compliance uh, testing. And uh, third, uh, you need to uh, actually work with the uh, community uh, and uh, get some support. Uh, uh, in our case, uh, it was our collaboration uh, with OFM. And ask everyone to look ahead and you sort of solve one problem or as I put it caught up to the bus. but. When you look ahead at the challenges your clients or customers are facing, and that's kind of a broad question about the wireless industry in general, are there challenges you see, things that, you know, maybe across the apply across the industry, not necessarily ones that you may solve per se, per se but if there are those, that'd be great. So as you look ahead at what, what your clients might be, or customers might be going through, what challenges do you see? Uh, so from our perspective, I mean, we're, we're certainly interested on in the messaging side of things. So as customers are starting to look at doing their first RCS deployments, uh, that's something that we're helping to uh, you know, discuss with them from a security perspective, what types of things they have to be cognizant of, what types of threats we can expect uh, to see in those types of networks. And that's, those are discussions that we've been having with, with carriers to try and make sure that they're setting out their uh, acceptable use cases in the proper fashion, that they're considering the right mix of uh, solutions that they need to put in place as they start to deploy their RCS environments. So that's really what we're, what we're focused on. But there are obviously other, other issues outside of our space that, uh, that we see as well. Okay, it sounds like you see almost kind of a coaching opportunity in sort of meeting, going between mobile data and Wi-Fi data, for example. Yeah, absolutely. You know, from from our perspective, the the market changed rapidly over the last two years with with LTE and shared data plans. So, what became a crisis of capacity has become something that has been a tremendous revenue engine for for many service providers. But uh, the reality is that people's uh, ordinary users hunger for uh, for data and for capacity and bandwidth is uh, really unassailable. So, you know, we, we think it wouldn't be long before we're back in a situation where um, people are, are, are really going through their data plans and there needs to be a, an, economic, an economic shift. So with that, we, we do worry about um, the role that, that Wi-Fi can, can play in providing economic service. So if, if service providers are in a situation where more and more of the data being consumed every month is happening over Wi-Fi networks and they're not keeping uh, pace or they're not participating in that, it, uh, you know, it, it, I think it undermines the, the role that they, that the service providers, the, the trusted role that they, that they need to play. So that's one thing that we that concerns us. So we're, we're down to four minutes, so I want to pause. I have plenty more questions, but I want to see if anyone in the room has any burning or even unburning questions for, for our panelists. John, I see you back there. You would put it in the cloud, John. What's that? You would put it in the cloud. I would. <laughs> so I'm asked the magic wand question. There's one thing you changed in your in your approach to carriers, basically the success that you've had. What's the one thing you would go back and say, well, if we just did this differently, revenue faster, lower complaints, rainbows and unicorns would fall from the sky. Think about the magic wand. Okay. Well, I think um, probably around um, our business, it's probably around cost. I mean, it's, it's really, if you look at compute and network, they've been through decades of Moore's Law and a, and a very steep silicon cost curve. Storage has just hit that over the last three or four years. So we're talking about you know, platform cost, cost per gigabyte, however you measure storage costs. We've had a drop in 
uh, our ability to deliver pricing by 75% in 24 months. So I think the biggest learning from that is that our customers knew that we were the Ferrari in the industry and we could solve performance problems, remove latency. The market has not yet woken up to the fact that we're priced like a Volkswagen because the silicon cost curve is so steep um, and applying that, that cost curve to storage versus a spinning disk drive has been a phenomenal change that the marketplace has yet, not yet really woken up to. And what it means is that you know, in a $40 billion storage industry, the flash space today is only a billion in the 40 billion that will probably open up to a 10 to $15 billion segment uh, of a $40 billion industry within 12 months. So the dynamics of such a steep cost curve being applied and the market not even realizing the cost effectiveness of what that silicon is doing to the data center beyond performance. And they can buy, you know, Ferraris for the cost of Volkswagen already. I'd love to know what you do with your older inventory, but that's, that's, a, that's a different question. So uh, I have one kind of, maybe it's a U.S. specific question, but we have both operator consolidation, but also potentially access diversification where it's easier to get online and connect without going to a wireless carrier per se. And want to see if that has implications to your business. Does it open new opportunities? Does buyer consolidation, T-Mobile buying, which we suggest, for example, does that open doors? Is it closed doors? I wonder if you could speak to that. I'll look at you because you're next to me. <laughs> uh, wrong answer. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's opportunities with uh, consolidation. Uh, from our perspective, there might be a, a change in infrastructure. And from uh, what we sell, we like to actually tack on our services onto a, a broader infrastructure sales. So if there's some efficiency that is going to be uh, made by actually consolidating two companies uh, and bringing the networks together, uh, sometimes there's a sales opportunity in there to uh, bring the network up to the, uh, the current uh, State of the art in terms of uh, the types of solutions that they have deployed. So, from our perspective, we've seen great opportunities in the first of the first. That's what a pointed question. But, uh, that's a good one. Well, it, it's both a threat and an opportunity. I would say the consolidation in the market, in particular, if the the uh, you know, smaller operator that's your initial customer has one use case in mind, you know, offloading traffic, and all of a sudden they're part of a pairing to which is monetizing every bit of capacity and has, has quite a bit of it for, for a while. So it does uh, represent a, a complete change in the, the style of product and the use case that you're selling. But we're, uh, we're actually really interested in the, the new breed of um, service provider that is, uh, that is appearing. In particular, those that uh, the term has been coined of, uh, of Wi-Fi first. You know, represents an opportunity for uh, the uh, new types of service provider where cellular is a critical part of it, but it's actually a relatively small part of the overall uh, service provision experience. So those types of um, Wi-Fi first opportunities can change the economics. And right now there are small companies like uh, Scratch and Republic Wireless in that space, but we believe that before long it's going to be some really significant brands that are offering that type of service and that represents a huge, you know, huge opportunity for everyone in this space. And you saw that with the Insum talk this morning where there's sponsor funded or sponsor initiated wireless happening now. So that's very interesting. So 